Good evening, I'm Mahesh Johnny in Colombo. Our continuing coverage on Sri Lanka's current economic crisis continues on this special report. We've been bringing you in the past few days about uh, what's happening in this country, what are the solutions available and where, which path we must take, not just thinking about our current uh, uh, issues uh, at hand and, and the, the, uh, uh, the problems that we are facing on a day-to-day -day basis, but we got to think beyond because the uh, idea here is not just to feel good today and suffer again in another few months or in another few years, but it is to find a sustainable solution that would last for a, for a, a good period of time, allowing Sri Lanka to grow. Now, this is hard to uh, uh, fathom and understand if you are standing in a fuel line or if you are standing in a gas line, uh, you are frustrated, you are going through uh, vulnerabilities, and that, that issue is there. But our leaders cannot be reacting based on the emotions uh, we see on a day-to-day day basis on television because if they do that then we will have this recurring issue on a day-to-day -day basis understanding what's going on is very important now we want to get the government side we want to understand what the government is doing for that uh, I'm glad to be joined by uh, the state minister of fisheries uh, Kanchan Vijayasekhar good to see you uh, minister after a long time um, you always visit me when there is an issue in the country. I appreciate that. Uh, here we are. I want to go back into 2017, 2018, uh, when that particular joke of a government was in power and they, during no pandemic, nothing, everything was uh, completely fine. They were taxing the people left, right and center because they went to the IMF and the IMF said, you know, do this, do that, that kind of a thing. They were following all those kinds of uh, 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 instructions by these um, organizations. And you all went and you all brought this Mahinda Sulanga and you all rallied the people against the injustice that was occurring in during that time. Um, that w continued and here you are, a minister of that government. And right now when due to COVID pandemic, due to a war in Ukraine and uh, the repercussions of global events that's occurring in Sri Lanka right now, um, we see, tend to see that the ministers of the government is acting in a little bit of a la di -da fashion and not exactly understanding the powers of the people because they want those problems solves ASAP and they don't want to stand in queues. They don't want to see a situation like in Zimbabwe or in another uh, African nation. What's going on? Have you lost the powers of the people? Uh, good evening, Mahesh. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, no, I understand the frustration uh, that is building among the public and we do regret the events uh, that has led to it, uh, especially the, uh, the supply chain. Uh, the distribution of certain services have been interrupted and we, s we do feel the frustration of the people and uh, we do regret uh, about some of the mismanagement uh, of some of the key ministries um, in the last couple of years uh, and also we do apologize for uh, the interruptions in services uh, but we had to look at these events as you correctly said um, um, there are certain events that were inherited to us as well and certain events uh, that were beyond our control with the COVID pandemic, um, which we never was ready for it. And I don't think any country was ready for a, a pandemic of this nature. And we didn't think it would last for this long as well. Um, so with those situations, I think uh, some of the um, uh, key areas that we should have focused on also should have uh, maybe put more focus on. Uh, I think uh, we didn't manage to do that, so we have to adjust for those situations, uh, especially the fuel crisis, the electricity, the power generation, the gas supply. Um, those things are, certain things are beyond our control. Now we have seen the global prices, yeah. um, um, I think it's a 14 year high uh, on oil and gas, and we have seen even in the other countries that about 30 or 40 percent of the prices have gone up. Um, so due to those reasons, we had to put some of the burden on the public as well. But uh, not just that, um, and as you correctly said, we started uh, rallying against the then government in 2017 uh, for certain policy decisions that they took. Um, and um, I'm, I'm not going to completely say that uh, there is a mismanagement from our part, uh, not, there is nothing from our part as well. 
uh, of course, uh, uh, the responsibility of the current government is to address some of the issues. President uh, uh, Gotabe Rajapaksa accepted the responsibility. Yes, of course, we have to accept those responsibilities, and we are ready to make sure that the uh, the people uh, get uninterrupted services. Uh, the power is restored. Uh, the fuel. Uh, gas, all those supplies are uh, back in order. Uh, so to do that, uh, we need to take into consideration our economic situation as well. As you are well aware, uh, the last two years uh, we've lost most of our income, yeah. uh, tourism income, remittance, uh, direct investments, uh, those things were not coming into the country. And then we had to give some tax reliefs to the public as well, which has been, uh, I don't know, the, the opposition right now says is was a wrong decision to take, uh, give some of the tax benefits to the public, uh, reduce the interest rates. Um, so those were certain things that we did to give some sort of relief to the public during a recession and during the pandemic. So um, I think um, um, we are, uh, uh, as a government, we do take responsibility for it and uh, we do have a plan to get out of it. That's what I'm more interested in uh, uh, right now, uh, Minister. Yes. Go we are undergoing uh, a tremendous uh, amount of hardships. Um, the people uh, standing on those queues and uh, in those lines do not uh, uh, care to look for a reason or to understand. It is very rare uh, to meet a person who is going to say, you know, yes, we understand the global situation. Yes, we understand what's happening in Ukraine, what's happening uh, with Russia, and that is why we are going through this, because we do not have any oil fields in Sri Lanka, nor do we have uh, anything to do with gas uh, here. I mean, we are hoping to get that, but still, we're not. But now the key question is now the problems we are facing, we're facing it. But now what the people are more interested about is what's the solution? How can we get out of this very quickly? Because that particular component is a little bit dodgy here. We, people don't understand. What are you going to do? Because we see uh, several ministers, not, not right now, even earlier on, they don't come into the media, explain to the people what's going on. Hey, this is what we are doing. This is going to uh, uh, you know, result in doing this. That kind of a, a, a clear understanding to the people. Because if the people understand what you're doing, then don't you think they also can support you uh, in order to get to that particular goal? Because right now what we see is the government working in silo. Opposition is massively taking uh, the, this opportunity in order to call for presidential elections, which is a joke. But people, clueless. What's going on? W what is the plan right now? Uh, Mahesh, I don't think uh, there is any solutions that you can uh, solve overnight. Um, and as you rightly said at the beginning, uh, it cannot be emotional decisions yes. that you uh, can take to come out of this. Um, it has to be uh, long-term policies. Uh, that's what the government was also going for in the last two and a half years. Giving tax relief to certain industries, local industries to grow. Um, then uh, get more export income into the country because there is only uh, three ways that we can get uh, foreign mm. uh, money coming into the country. It has to be foreign direct investments, it has to be export income, it, or it has to be from remittance or from tourism, what, what we receive. Um, but we need to focus on areas that we can uh, go into the world market. So that's where we have focused in the last two years, uh, especially substituting most of the imports that we've had uh, and if you can remember, uh, most of the import commodities, uh, the plantation sector uh, was substituted uh, and uh, we started growing more and more of them. We started farming them uh, and we started investing heavily on local industries, on fisheries, agriculture, plantations. Uh, so those policies has to continue. Uh, even though we are facing hardships right now, uh, I don't think any temporary fix would do. Uh, and also we uh, need to make sure that we keep the country operating. Uh, there were calls in the past, if you remember, after the first lockdown, mm. uh, after the vaccination process was uh, ongoing, that uh, there were a couple of instances where people wanted to uh, lock down the entire country. Uh, people are not keen on getting vaccinated. Uh, there were so many protests uh, uh, going on, asking for salary hikes, asking for yes. different benefits. Um, so uh, this is not the time to be to do doing that. that. Yeah. Uh, I understand if, if at all, if you go in for an next election, it's a democratic right of the people to choose whoever they wish to. But uh, as the elected uh, government, as the elected members, uh, we will make sure that the next three years uh, during our tenure, uh, 
uh, that the long-term policy, especially uh, focusing on the local industries and also getting, uh, we have to uh, somehow find ways uh, to get foreign investments into yes. the country. We can't discourage them. If you remember uh, the first instance where the east terminal of the, uh, the Colombo port, uh, a 700 million investment opportunity uh, was lost due to some of the discouragement by some of the trade, trade unions, unions yes. some of our own members, um, uh, New Fortress Energy, uh, LNG facility coming to Sri Lanka. I, I of course believe in if there is any investment that com could come into the power sector or any service sector, that could reduce the cost for the public. And if the service is provided uninterrupted, that we should allow them to do that. And uh, there were instances when even uh, uh, Sri Lanka Telecom, uh, back during uh, Chandrika Bandar and Kumar Tunga's time, uh, when it was uh, going into a public-private partnership, uh, there were protests, there was concerns. Uh, but with that, we opened up a whole different avenue for the telecommunications sector. Um, and I feel the same way should happen with some of the services, some with especially with power generation, uh, especially uh, with uh, technology, uh, investment opportunities, public-private partnerships should be encouraged. And also, um, we are looking at some of the numbers from remittance, from tourism, from export income. And uh, with our cost, uh, if we can manage that, I think we can build up our reserves. Uh, and if we can manage to uh, keep one policy going, uh, we should be able to manage this. Yesterday, the president uh, addressed the nation and he said that he understands what's going on, uh, but he fell short of explaining what, I'm, what he's doing in order to get out of this crisis because right now people are angry and effigies of the president, the prime minister and certain ministers being burnt. Uh, these kinds of uh, images are being you know, posted all over the world. Uh, I was also going through certain uh, you know comments made by the liberal people from Colombo where they were very ashamed when you guys did protest back in 2017 and this time around they they take a picture of, the, of a guy who's burning around i think more than 350 rupee uh, you know costing loaf of bread and he say i stand by with this person so i don't understand that particular comparison from how they disagreed at that time and now they agree with that uh, this is what's happening because it is very clear emotional emotions are running really thick and high in, in the country. Now, one of the things that you guys, um, the SLPP government, the SLFP government, President Mahindra Rajapaksa, President Gotabe Rajapaksa, these individuals are and known all throughout history as people uh, who bring solutions. Your, when there is a problem, you all make sure that we apply the solution that is being posted in history. We don't have to look anywhere else. We know about our war, we know about our economy, all those. But now we see a slight deviation of policy wise uh, from what you all said, uh, we have to be self-sustainable. We need to think from uh, 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 import-oriented economy to an export-oriented economy. All these kinds of things are really good in the long term. And if we can get it done, it is absolutely uh, something that we will flourish, like Vietnam or, or, or some of the regional countries like Bangladesh. But now you're like coming back with this decision to go to the IMF and with these de certain decisions. It looks like the public pressure, the liberal pressure has got to you all. Uh, those days, you all didn't even, you know, didn't give two hoots what was said in, in Colombo because Colombo is not the decision maker uh, of the day, uh, finally, when it comes to uh, the voting bloc. But right now, it seems that you all are afraid of something. Has the pressure got to you all? Uh, no, I don't agree that uh, we are just focusing on just uh, uh, taking policy decisions on just pressure. Uh, we have ap approached uh, not just the, the International Monetary Fund, but other agencies as well. Uh, the World Bank, ADB, uh, other international agencies, uh, whichever support that we can get uh, to turn things around, uh, to get support to our economy, uh, we would uh, get them. But it's going to be on our terms. It's not going to be on is their it, terms. Is it true? It's, yes. Um, we, we, uh, of course, we will be approaching them 
uh, well, of course they will put out some conditions if they're going to support us but we will have to pick uh, which conditions that we will uh, we will adhere to and uh, which conditions that we won't be able to continue in and I'm 100% I'm sure that it will not compromise any of the policies uh, that uh, Gotabe Rajapaksa or Mahindra Rajapaksa continued uh, from 2005 onwards uh, and as you rightly said it's a challenging time and we have never run away from a challenge yeah. uh, and uh, if people are trying to um, go against uh, the president um, throw him out um, they can try all those things, but election. it's not going to. Yes. Of course, that they can do that. But uh, the next three years, uh, during his tenure, he's going to take up this challenge. We are going to take up this challenge, and we are going to take this more seriously. Um, and we are going to address the issues um, that are there. And uh, we will make sure that we come out of this as well. And um, Mahesh, if you remember, this is not the first time that we have no, gone no, through this, this process. This is what I tell everybody. Um, so we've Sri gone Lanka through difficult. We, we have gone through m more, much more difficult times. And uh, sometimes we forget where we come from, <laughs> yeah, and course. we forget uh, how our entire economic policy was uh, shaped to a different uh, requirement yeah. in the last five years. Um, and I, I saw some of the news articles, some of the things that we've been shared about. Uh, how our reserves have depleted and how our neighboring countries have done well during COVID. But we had to take into consideration uh, how it started declining from 2015. Exactly. Our reserves never... Uh, there was no growth. There's no growth. There's so no growth. Our reserves were at 8 billion in uh, 2015 in January. Uh, and 2019, it was still at 7 billion. But during the five years, the, so the average... This is, this is exactly what I'm, what I'm asking, uh, Minister, because you see the arguments made by liberal think tanks in Sri Lanka right now, especially in Colombo, and, and individuals who, who is catering to this, uh, you know, we have to go to the West, we have to go to the West kind of uh, mentality. They continuously tell these things, and earlier on, you all did not wave whatsoever. But right now, we see that is occurring. Now, that is a little bit worrying uh, because the people who trusted y'all when they wa voted y'all in back in 2019 they were thinking in the lines of Sri Lanka is going to stand we are not going to beg anymore we are not going to be a beggars nation taking loans after loans from all these institutions who's going to dictate our economic policy and what's what's going on no, of course, uh, we are not going to be dictated terms by anyone else. Um, of course, uh, uh, but as the, the leader of the country, the president has to uh, listen to the public as well and listen to the representatives of the parliament. So most of the uh, party members um, and also uh, the other opposition members, uh, there were some requests that was made. So based on those requests, uh, the president has looked into different uh, avenues if it is possibility if there's any possibility it doesn't necessarily mean that we are going to pick that path but if there is any advantage mm. uh, going into IMF uh, of course we will take that but if there is indeed disadvantage that's what the president clearly stated uh, that he will he looked at the disadvantages the advantages and also in continuing forward uh, it will be the same process uh, but I of course believe um, we can come out of this. Um, of, course. of course, we uh, need to uh, work a little bit harder. Uh, there'll be a tough time, uh, maybe a couple of weeks, until we completely restore the supply chains. Uh, it's not going to do overnight. And I see people uh, queuing up every day. Uh, it has now become problem. like the, the who can give the most creative uh, comment <laughs> standing in a, in a, in a queue, uh, no, that do. kind of a, a redundant uh, exercise. It, it, it's, it's not just with the supply chain breaking up, it's just panic buying setting in. My God, there. yes, this, this, this is absolutely right because there was no fuel crisis. Uh, we, uh, some idiot came on television and said something and that created some kind of a panic within the minds of the people. They ran to the petrol shed, got everything that they possibly could. We not, not just on the supply, not just on the quantities that was left, but also about the pricing that it should go up to. Mm. So when people consider if the prices are going to go up the next day, 
uh, or if there's going to be not enough so supply. It, 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 <laughs> it comes back to what I've been saying, education. Why isn't the government taking more, uh, taking seriously this, this fact that you all have to count uh, whatever the bull that is being said by the opposition. There is uh, there's nothing, uh, Minister. Uh, if, if, uh, today, uh, yesterday, uh, again, the 2015 tagline came into, not yesterday, I, th I think on the day that the protest was there, the 2015 taglines, the corruption, 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 that uh, nonsense again came. I mean, nobody apparently would have told the opposition leader, we already said that and it didn't work, but uh, now I it's back. But the countering of, because there is so, so much misinformation, there is so much misleading uh, uh, traits that are there, even if you take that particular information given by uh, Verite Research, talking about, you know, everybody did well, but we didn't. They, they were hiding lots of elements, which misleading, I, I misleading. Yeah. exactly, in order to get you all to a certain uh, this thing. So why isn't the government thinking about, no, 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 we can't, we can't do this. We have to be more strong in, in, in communicating to our people. Um, Mahesh, uh, it's very difficult to answer that question, but I guess uh, if you look at Gota Rajapaksa's candidacy, uh, throughout his uh, presidential campaign there were so many allegations uh, leveled against him. There were so many things that were said on um, stage, uh, but he never responded to any of those things. He just stated his policies. Um, and I guess... Um, I understand that, uh, Minister, when uh, 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 about some kind of nonsense, like if, if there's a personal attack, an allegation, that's yeah. fine, but this is about running the country, the governance. Uh, don't you think it's really important to clearly, uh, step by step, tell no, the I, people? I, I do understand. I think there should be better communication from the government. One thing that we lack uh, in the last two and a half years is communication. Uh, things we, d we have done, we have not communicated. Yeah. Things we intend to do, we have not communicated. Uh, we have not communicated uh, about some of the misleading news that have been going on. And uh, of course there are other elements too that uh, certain things when we do go and say it in the media, it doesn't get picked up as well because uh, uh, there are more misleading yes. news that are uh, more important. Uh, in <laughs> <this> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a problem with the media. If, if the media is thinking misleading is much more important than the truth. Not, not just, <coughs> I'm, I'm not talking about mainstream media, but social media plays a huge yeah, role in Sri Lankan, uh, Sri Lanka right now. As, so a, as a minister, you would not uh, say uh, mainstream media, but I say that the mainstream <laughs> media is the biggest problem in, in terms of clarifying things. I, I, I even allude to our own channel saying there is a lot of uh, uh, bull that has been said on 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 uh, our prime time news which 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 is yeah, which is redundant yeah, at the end of the day. The, now I've, I've seen now uh, the same people who go and protest saying we need salary hikes uh, and uh, salary enormities that was there for 24 years uh, for teachers for yeah. principals uh, and the same people come and say the state uh, uh, income has decreased <laughs> and we need to uh, tax the people and I saw that uh, even um, uh, former minister Harsha Silva saying that we need to go back, we need to revise uh, the tax concessions <laughs> that the government gave in 2019 November uh, was not the way forward and we need to put those taxes back. <laughs> but then I saw the opposition leader in his speech just outside the president's secretariat <laughs> said, I'm going to give more relief, I'm going to give more tax benefits uh, when I do come into power. <laughs> so I don't <laughs> understand <laughs> some of the... <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. I mean... We know it's bull. Uh, the opposition, especially Dr. Harsha De Silva, I mean, we've been talking on, 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 on my other program, State of the Nation, and even on Get Real, uh, you know, explaining to the people how, how redundant he There was another issue as well where he's talking about depletion of foreign reserves and everything, but, you know, we don't have dollars. But then he goes into the supermarkets and buy a foreign product instead of buying the local one. So he's also helping uh, in order to get. That is a different uh, conversation. I mean, conversation. Um, we with uh, um, the State Minister of Fisheries, Kanchan Vijayasekhar, we are trying to get the government side of things uh, with regard to this economic story, which is which is missing at the moment. We're just uh, seeing a lot of uh, liberal, uh, West-leaning uh, individuals coming on television all the time and telling you, hey, we got the silver bullet, but be cautious when you're listening to them. Always use uh, common sense, that's all, nothing much. It's not a big deal, you don't have to get a degree on that utilize common sense and try to understand what is being said, why is this being manipulated, where would they go. One argument, <coughs> excuse me, uh, they say is that IMF, 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 IMF. 
people need to ask, ask this question. IMF was here from 2015 to 2019. It, it's not far away. We went to them 16 times. So if we went to them 16 times, then our economies should be like in paradise right now because they fixed all the problems. They did not. So IMF is not a solution that we can see in order to get out of this. Uh, critical thinking, uh, making sure that we actually get our problems sorted out here rather than looking for you know, that silver bullet would be the way forward. But then again, um, let's see how it goes. Let's take a short commercial break. You're watching our special report on uh, Sri Lanka's economic crisis. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone to our special report on Sri Lanka's economic crisis and, and the solutions ahead. We are discussing tonight with uh, the government, uh, taking uh, into consideration the government side of things. Uh, Minister of State Minister of Fisheries, Kanchan Vijayasekhar is here. We've be, uh, been trying to get some responses from him with regard to the public's uh, feeling right now and what the government is trying to do. Uh, Minister C, when there has been especially uh, President Mahindra Rajapaksa's government and even President Gautabe Rajapaksa's government, when you all were in power, uh, there was a friend that who was always there in order to stand by with us through thick and thin, whether it's at the UNHRC or whether it's in a global level, or even here when there's a disaster in the country, let's say if there's a landslide, those guys were here putting their hands uh, right around our shoulder and telling us everything is going to be okay and they have helped us immensely now that particular friend is missing in this conversation of economic crisis i'm talking about china per se lots of uh, 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 conservative thinking uh, economists believe and they are puzzled as to why sri lanka did not actually approach china uh, in order to sort these it issues out. Yes, we had a couple of uh, you know, hiccups on the way with regard to that fertilizer crisis matter, in the Sampur uh, power plant matter, uh, all that. But I don't think our friendship is that fragile uh, in order you know, for them to be angry just because of two issues that popped up because China has always been that friend who can, you can sit down and have a proper conversation and we know that they do not pressure us to do internal changes in our laws and everything just because they want to support us. Why didn't the government think on China's path? Look, the government has uh, never stopped uh, um, relationships with China. Uh, if you remember the last two years, we've seen uh, the Chinese foreign minister, Chinese uh, um, defense minister, uh, the Chinese uh, speaker of the parliament. Uh, all of them have come to Sri Lanka over the last two years. Uh, and we are hopeful that China will also uh, support in some way. Uh, and they have been supporting us uh, in the last two years as well. Uh, so they will uh, help us with, the, with a much bigger relief package. Uh, for uh, for our economy, um, but there are uh, forces within the country uh, that try to uh, drive away the friendship that the the Chinese government has with the Sri Lankan government. Um, and uh, if you remember, the the two countries that helped us the most during the war was China and Russia. Yes. And unfortunately, Russia is uh, in is, a is in a uh, situation where they have been kicked out of the EU. Uh, and there are so many sanctions against them and uh, if Sri Lanka is to go towards that way or is looked in a uh, <laughs> uh, looked at a uh, negative way uh, especially uh, by the, the opposition the general public and uh, we have to be very careful on how we deal with things uh, because we saw that uh, the last five years uh, during the Yahapal and government uh, it, it just made so many countries use our resources uh, for a power battle. Yep. Um, so we have to deal with them diplomatically. Uh, there are certain agreements that we can't uh, just ignore and just we can't break away from, uh, even though it's been signed by a different government or a previous government or any government. Uh, when you sign with a government-to-government uh, -government contract, uh, you have to be very careful how, how you deal with things. So. Um, we are discussing with China, we are discussing with all the other uh, friendly countries as well. 
So whatever relief that comes our way without any conditions and whichever suits our uh, policies, of course, we'll be uh, hoping to take them on. Uh, and as you mentioned earlier as well about IMF and everything, but IMF or going to any other institution will be uh, based on our policies. It has to be a homegrown solution uh, because um, in the past we have seen uh, the same institutes, uh, how they have started to um, mm. dictate terms. Uh, that's what I'm, that's what I'm, but that's what the whole uh, voting bloc uh, who, who stood by you. Yeah, the but if it gives confidence to uh, the, the investors, if it gives confidence to uh, any industry, of course we'll have to, as a government, we'll take to see whichever avenue that will be a, a solution or a better uh, package for the Sri Lankan economy. So, of course, we will have dialogues with everyone. And, of course, uh, you will see in the future, in the next coming few weeks, um, that the finance minister, the, the president himself, will also uh, have more cordial relationship with China. Will uh, the president visit China? Of course, it's, uh, it's in the pipeline. Uh, but there are restrictions uh, within China as well right now with the COVID lockdowns. Um, so there are some restrictions that you have to go through. Uh, even through, even for the diplomatic channels. Um, but we are hopeful that the President will make a visit soon uh, to all the countries that are willing to help Sri Lanka. Uh, and we have seen that support has grown also, even in the UNHRC uh, Human Rights Council, certain yes. uh, changes that we have made, uh, and there were certain misleading facts that were uh, created uh, a wrong impression on the government, the wrong impression on the leader. So um, it has been a long process for us to uh, turn things around. And I remember now uh, my experience as the State Minister for Fisheries, um, it was a tough one and a half years or two years for us to especially uh, have a dialogue with the European Union, mm -hmm. uh, restrictions on fisheries exports, uh, those sort of things. So we were looking at straight away certain uh, restrictions uh, based on some of the misleading facts that have been communicated yes. uh, by the opposition members. And I saw recently as well some members going to the Geneva Human Rights Council. <laughs> um, uh, again, some of the decisions that the Supreme Court, uh, our yeah. justice system has taken. Uh, so those are not things that uh, will help our country. But uh, I would also like to make an appeal to the public. Uh, of course, we understand all the frustration, uh, the hardship that everyone is going through. And uh, we all feel about that. But I do urge the public to be patient uh, and also to keep faith uh, in the policies that we will be implementing in this country. Are you all working on something at least behind closed doors because right now what we are hearing from the government side of things even uh, what you uh, mentioned is that you all understand the pressure, the, 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 the suffering but that is not what people need to hear. People need to hear, are you doing something about it is what they really need to hear oh, because suffering is, is short term. But if there is something being done on behind closed doors, because if everybody is just sitting around a desk and not doing anything, then it's useless uh, understanding the pressure and the, uh, the pain of the public. So is the government doing something to get this sorted out? Uh, no, Amasha, I agree to a certain extent that not all the plans that the government laid out uh, had worked according to plan. Uh, certain plans that we laid out from 2019 and early 2020, our policy statements, um, I'm just taking one example, renewable energy yeah. was one uh, area that the president was very keen on, very fond on, and he tried to push that across. Um, but there are certain elements within uh, those se sectors, some stakeholders, uh, which do not want that to happen in Sri Lanka. And that's why we are facing a huge power uh, crisis at this moment. Um, because we can't continue to uh, generate power on uh, hydropower or on just coal power. We need to uh, think of other ways of renewable energy, uh, solar power, wind power, or any other LNG facility uh, that should uh, cater to the demands uh, uh, of the public. Because every year there's about 5 or 10 percent increase in the requirement. But over the last seven years, there has not been any megawatt introduced into one megawatt introduced into yeah, the, yeah. The, the grid. The so last one that is also one area and certain other policies as well. Now, when you try to implement certain new policies or certain change certain ways, um, it's not an easy thing to do, uh, especially with the lockdowns. It was a much difficult yeah. task. Um, and of course, when you uh, dry up on uh, the reserves, especially with the income 
uh, that you're supposed to generate from tourism, from remittance, uh, when it doesn't come this way. And I, I saw that certain media institutes, uh, social media, uh, showing certain uh, sections that saying people are trying to leave this country. But if you remember properly, uh, correctly, uh, two years ago, the same uh, institutions, the same media, were showing uh, footage of uh, people trying to come back into this country. And there were concerns that the Sri Lankan government was not doing anything to bring them back. Again, um, um, it, it goes back into what I've been saying before. Uh, those lines that was leaving this country was people who were working abroad and, and everything was cleared for a good level that they had the opportunity to go back for employment. Yes. Uh, that was the truth. And people misled it and there was no response from no, the there, government. There was 260,000 people who came back to Sri Lanka during the pandemic. Yeah. Some people lost their jobs and came back. Some people left their jobs and came back. Some people who came back for safety did yeah. not go back. Yeah. So there's only about 110,000 people who had left in the last two years yeah. back to their jobs. And um, annually, um, um, generally there's about 100,000 people who leave for employment, for studies, for different various reasons. Exactly. So, um, so uh, it's very difficult to sometimes counter those things. Uh, and I, I, of course, understand now um, immediate concern is to uh, the rest of the supply chain. Um, and we had to make that dis difficult decision of increasing fuel prices, gas prices. Uh, those things had to be made because we were losing a lot of money. Um, um, anyway, y'all are losing still. A yeah, lot still of we are still losing a lot of money. I remember the first meeting that we had uh, two weeks ago uh, with the Petroleum Corporation. They were saying they were losing 108, 98 rupees per litre of diesel and still we lose 128 rupees a litre of kerosene uh, and still f diesel even with the increment of 55 rupees we are still losing about 70 rupees on a litre of diesel. I, I want to keep touching on that particular subject mm -hmm. but before that uh, we need to take a short commercial break. Uh, you're watching our special report. I'm in conversation with the State Minister of Fisheries, uh, Kanchan Vijayasekhar. We'll be right back. This is our special report on Sri Lanka's current economic crisis. I'm in conversation with the State Minister of Fisheries, Kanchan Vijayasekara. Minister Vijayasekara, uh, yeah, we talked about the issues, right? Uh, now, there's a lot of uh, information about uh, petrol queues. I mean, for, for 30 minutes, 40 minutes of, of, of the day, it's been dedicated for queues. So it is Q news uh, rather than uh, any, any problem solving uh, mechanisms being reported. Uh, one of the good things was yesterday, which was not reported in the news, was the fact that after I, I think many months, only one person died due to COVID. After 11 uh, months. After 11 months, actually. Yes, uh, um, that was not reported in the news. Uh, apparently, that was not. Not good Relevant. enough, uh, uh, you know. One person, we need a huge amount in order to die for our newsroom to wake up and report that news. But apparently, that shows how successfully Sri Lanka been managed in this pandemic. And you need to understand: if we get rid of this pandemic, then guess what? The rest of the other in, uh, sectors will fall back, and this is where we will start seeing growth. Understanding that sorting the COVID crisis uh, from the onset and making sure that we hammer it down, vaccinations, uh, controlling it. We've done a tremendous amount. We are like in the highest ranking uh, stage when it comes to uh, countries that has managed COVID well. Now that is, uh, we have to do that in order to make sure that our rest of the story becomes positive. If that was also screwed, boy, I, I do not know what to say right now. So we have to at least be thankful and grateful that our military, our health workers, even the government, even the president, the prime minister, everybody did their part in managing that. There are lots of positive stories uh, that is not being reported as well, just like that one. Exports are doing well. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, 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 you know, uh, exports occurring right now. Even your ministry is doing very well. Uh, what's, what sort of things uh, uh, is happening behind closed doors again, you know, not, not, not being uh, mentioned in, in uh, mainstream media? Uh, Mahesh, one of the things that we worked on the last two years uh, when we uh, got into the government was to make sure that uh, we have enough income generated from our exports and that we 
uh, go into a lot of value additions and we support those industries. And key areas that we looked at was the plantation sector, the fisheries sector. And um, everyone talks about Sri Lanka being an island nation, um, ocean around it. Uh, we've got inland uh, water bodies and all those things, but uh, export income never really took off. Uh, our export and import gap uh, was only about 25 million USD uh, by 2020. Uh, but last year we managed to get the highest ever uh, export income, 318 million. Uh, the previous best was 299. Uh, that was in 2019. Uh, and from 2020, uh, we actually went 100 million over uh, uh, from the figures from 2020. Uh, and also the trade gap. Uh, now, even though every year our export numbers have been increased in value, imports uh, were increasing. the imports were increasing as well. Um, so for the first time in uh, two decades, uh, our export import trade gap, our trade balance in fisheries um, surpassed the 100 million mark. So we are on 126 million uh, 2021. And we hope to target about 440 million this year. And there's a lot of investments, uh, um, local investments in uh, shrimp farming, uh, ornamental fisheries. Mm -hmm. Ornamental fisheries, we got a growth of about 74% last year. Uh, not an industry a lot of people mm. know about. We are the seventh largest right now in the world uh, in terms of exports. And we are going into a uh, lot of value addition. And also, uh, we have made Sri Lanka self-sustainable in uh, canned fish. Uh, canned fish requirement um, was about 275,000 cans per day in Sri Lanka, and we were only producing 90,000 locally. 185,000 daily was imported to Sri Lanka. No, that uh, has stopped? Uh, not completely stopped. We want to make sure that uh, people also get a choice. Uh, there are certain people that who will want to go for the imported brands, but we have made it available local brands uh, at an affordable price. Uh, we are producing 275,000 uh, daily now, and our imports have decreased by 74% compared to 2019. Big, uh, biggest uh, accusation or biggest, biggest uh, misconception uh, within the public uh, to s sort towards imported one, uh, imported products is ba because they think that is of better quality. quality. Yeah. Uh, so what exactly is this quality? Uh, I mean, what is our, our product's quality? If no, we I would take say our quality, the local produce quality is much better because we use uh, fresh uh, fish from uh, the fishermen in Sri Lanka. Uh, we use uh, what you call linna fish or jack mackerel. Uh, but uh, the imported cans, probably they're frozen for over five or ten years. We never know uh, how long they're frozen for. Uh, and there are no regulations to test uh, the products. There's only just uh, parameters to check when they're imported into the country. Uh, so um, I would say the quality uh, is 100 percent better uh, Are you testing on that quality? Yes, of course. Now we have uh, included certain regulations so that uh, even the raw material uh, or even the canned fish that has been imported into Sri Lanka has been tested regularly. Um, one of the things that we lack is now when we do exports, there's a lot of testing for our exports that mm -hmm. goes into different countries. But when we import <laughs> things, um, there's nothing. They, they don't check on warehouses. They don't check on storage. They don't, they don't check on where it's originating from. They don't check where it's going to how it's been handled, none of those things have been checked. So now, right now, we are doing some regulation changes uh, and we have uh, given it to the legal draftsman to be drafted. Uh, so those will be in play. And uh, also we have increased the taxes on some of the imports. Mm. Um, uh, fish, uh, dry fish, Maldive fish, sprats, uh, canned fish, all these things. We have enough numbers to supply. Uh, and also we are heavily investing in inland fisheries. A lot of people think just the ocean, but uh, we've got about 58,000 natural, uh, what do you call, uh, water uh, resources, uh, rivers, water bodies uh, throughout the country, and we use only about 1% of those uh, aquaculture um, uh, resources that we have. So we have gone into farming. It's much more of a sustainable way, um, and we don't want to put too much pressure on the ocean resources as mm -hmm. well. We have utilized most of the ocean yeah. resources, so we can't put too much pressure on it. But we are focusing more on inland fisheries and not just fisheries sector. Is it, 
isn't uh, I mean what Sri Lanka has been missing it's not about the resources it's about the network because we have uh, uh, failed to get all these inland uh, farmers who are doing these kinds of thing into the national grid and actually have have them uh, uh, benefit from like if it is exports then let let the uh, let a farmer in Munragal or Vellavai actually has the access to that that network was oh, missing not only not only for fisheries but even for milk that is the case so what kind of steps uh, have you all taken in order to rectify that no, you absolutely are correct because most of the inland fishermen they just go fishing for their daily consumption. Yeah. It's not just a market oriented or a sales oriented business. But what we have done recently is we have given them a price. We have uh, got the Ceylon Fisheries Corporation going into their villages. We have got more stakeholders going into them purchasing fish. Uh, we have given them a good price for that. Uh, and also we are doing a buyback system. Uh, we give them the fingerlings to be deposited into the resources and then we buy back from mm -hmm. them as well. So we have got the private sector with our centers, which has been controlled by NACDA. Uh, we have 13 centers across the country. Uh, cool room facilities, processing plants, mm -hmm. value additions uh, was not there for inland fisheries. Now that has been looked into. So most of the farmers are now working with some of the private sector. Uh, but one thing we have encouraged is not to just go government enterprises and set up mm. businesses there. But those things not are sustainable. Uh, yeah. not sustainable and you invest a lot of money and if it is not managed well, um, you lose out. So right now what we're doing is we're working in the private sector. We have opened the doors even uh, in our government institutes for them to come up, take up some facilities, storage facilities, uh, invest their money, continue that business while taking care of the needs of the uh, those fishermen and the farmers. So uh, that has been looked at. New technology has been given to them. New regulations are in place. Uh, we need to uh, immediately do certain things before we uh, expand inland fisheries because it's very difficult to transform the marine fishermen uh, immediately yes. because they've been traditionally, uh, they've been used to a certain way of fishing. But that also we are working with the World Bank right now. Uh, World Bank and the, the, the UK Blue Planet Fund uh, are both uh, uh, funding some of the projects that we have proposed and we are hopeful that they will uh, give us the funding to transform some of these needs. Uh, not just fisheries, uh, Mahesh, no, plantation sector has taken a different step as well. Um, coconut industry, um, rubber industry has gone over $1 billion uh, last year. Uh, tea industry is still growing and people had concerns that we might lose on the, the tea production but last year we saw the production also numbers also going up. Uh, cinnamon has gone up uh, and there are other local industries uh, that uh, we are putting more focus on uh, to get more value additions and uh, to be exported. So we are looking good on export numbers and one thing I want to touch on this COVID numbers is also that uh, as you correctly said, uh, it was not on the news yesterday that there was only one mm -hmm. death reported uh, after 11 months. I saw the day before yesterday there not was eight deaths. Not even SMS. Not even SMS. Um, I actually went back on my SMS feed from all the news mm -hmm. channels that I get. None of the news channels had that news covered yesterday. Uh, so we are going in the positive direction. And if you remember um, when uh, 12 months ago, before this vaccination drive started in the world, uh, so many accusations were leveled against the government. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. One thing was that um, they accused <laughs> that the government didn't have the money to do it. Yeah. Um, and even if we had the money and if we, and if we ordered it, we wouldn't be able to get it on time. And when we got the vaccines, uh, there was a quality about the vaccines being questioned. Uh, and then when all the vaccines were here, uh, that was questioned whether we could do the vaccination to cover everyone uh, in a closed, uh, in, a, in a very short time. So See, all those things were managed. My Minister, I, I think if you can learn something from that particular experience is because, you know, you were told you cannot do, but you met the challenge and you did it, is because through you told the people, you communicated to the people and you said, hey, this is our plan and this is what we want to do and they stood by it. So I think that's something that you can learn from that particular uh, experience and, and apply for this current experience, uh, current crisis as well. Because the thing is, uh, we want a government that's working for the people. We don't want a government that is like the Yahapalne sitting in AC rooms and not 
not not uh, you know feeling the powers of the people. Uh, Y'all were never known as people who were who never felt the powers of the people. So right now, I think it is very vital that you all go back to the people, uh, understand the, the frustration that they have. I mean, I'm sure if a minister, uh, the, the, the energy minister or, or the minister in charge of power goes into a fuel line, talk to the people, they will calm down. They will understand because it is, uh, we can't be saying our people don't understand our people. It's just the information is not there for them to understand. So I hope that would be something that you all positively be thinking about. Obviously, we, 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 will, we will be doing that. Um, obviously, uh, the government will act on everything that we have given promises on. So we will uh, continue to uh, do the hard work. Um, as I said before, it's not going to be results overnight. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's going to be a long process. And everybody knows and, that. Everybody knows um, no, uh, the problem is the people that who knows this are the people that who keep style. Who keep style <laughs> that's a problem. True that enough, people true enough. who understand this much better. Yeah, true, um, true. <laughs> and that's that's what we are trying to do here. Uh, our programs like that to get get the people to understand the other side of, of this argument that has been made, uh, especially by by the opposition and, and liberal leaning uh, individuals. That's all the time we have, uh, Minister, uh, the State Minister of Fisheries, Kanchan Vijayasekhar. I really appreciate your time coming here and explaining it to the people. I hope like a lot of ministers follow your suit and try to do that, uh, go to the people, go to their constituencies, speak to their pe own people and get them to understand we're, we, we are all in this together. There is this attempt by the opposition who is trying to say the government is some entity that is sitting in some cloud, but it is, uh, it is the, 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 uh, the responsibility of the government to tell the people that the government is them. It is part of them rather than in, in order to you know separate yourselves from the people because that is not going to help anybody. Once again, Minister, I really appreciate Appreciate your time. Um, good to see you uh, on the Thank program you. as well. Well, that's all the time we have for you. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back again tomorrow at the same time with another uh, episode on our special report. Uh, I'm Mahesh Johnny in Colombo. Have a good night.